Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Bulldog Weekly. I'm Mike. And I'm Kylie. In today's episode, we will check out girls basketball, learn some fun facts, hear the story of an actor, and build some tasty houses. But first, we'll begin with the weekly update from our principal, Mr. Duvall. All right, Happy New Year, everybody. It's the Bulldog Rundown. Uh, it is New Year's Eve today. We're almost at 2018. We return to school on January 2nd, and that's a day four and on Tuesday. Uh, the debate team travels to Bishop Stang for an afternoon debate. In the evening at 6.30 p.m. at Greater New Bedford, our boys and girls track teams will be competing. Wednesday, January 3rd is a day five in our schedule. School council meets at 2.15. The Friends of Old Rochester Drama at 6.45 p.m and the turf meeting at 7 p.m. Boys basketball competes at home that night versus Somerset Berkeley in our gym at 6.30 p.m. Thursday, January 4th, day six, we're easing you into the new year with a one hour delay. So we're on our one hour delay schedule on January 4th, Friday, January 5th, day seven in our schedule, slow day during the day. Boys basketball is at home in the evening at 6.30 versus Greater New Bedford. Saturday, January 6th, no school, but we have ice hockey 11.30 versus Greater New Bedford at Tabor. That's a morning 11.30, the puck drops. We hope everybody has a safe and happy New Year's, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Mr. Duvall, for that informative message. Now, on to sports. The girls' basketball game versus Derby happened last Friday on December 22nd. We have a short compilation of the game in this week's Sports Highlights. Go Bulldogs. Fun fact, McKaylee. Did you know that Old Rochester Regional got a huge renovation in 2001? Wow, that is a fun fact. Speaking of fun facts, I recently met up with a bunch of students and teachers to discuss some fun facts you probably didn't already know. Check it out. Fun fact, banging your head against the wall for an hour burns 150 calories. Fun fact, you can take Route 6 all the way to California. <laughs> Fun fact, why can't your nose be 12 inches long? Because it'd be a foot. Fun fact, a baby octopus is about the size of a flea when it is born. Fun fact, the Twitter bird actually has a name, Larry. Fun fact, when hippos are upset, their sweat turns red. <laughs> Fun fact, an eagle can kill a deer and fly away with it. Fun fact, did you know you'll create enough saliva in your lifetime to fill two swimming pools? Fun fact, a lion's roar can be heard from five miles away. Fun fact, a crocodile can't poke its tongue out. Fun fact, did you know that a flock of crows is known as a murder? Fun fact, a human brain has a capacity to store five times five times as much information as Wikipedia. Fun fact, if you lift a kangaroo's tail up, they can't hop. Fun fact, the seahorse in, uh, on Route 6 in Napoleza is 38 feet tall. Fun fact, heart attacks are more likely to happen on a Monday. 
Fun fact, a sheep, a duck, and a rooster were the first passengers in a hot air balloon. Fun fact, do you know why the sky is blue? The sky is blue because of the chemical composition of the atmosphere, which, another fun fact, is 78% nitrogen, and the gas molecules in the atmosphere scatter the light that reduce the wavelength of the light that reaches Earth. And do you know what color has the smallest wavelength? Blue. Fun fact, a baby spider is called a spiderling. Fun fact, if you write the three digits of pi backwards, it spells pi. Fun fact, in the 1880s in England, pants was considered a dirty word. Fun fact, giraffes only need two hours of sleep while bats need 20. Fun fact, an arctophile is a person who collects or is very fond of teddy bears. Fun fact, you can search a digital database of Kurt Vonnegut's rejection letters at the Kurt Vonnegut Memorial Library in Indianapolis. Fun fact, George Washington wore dentures, that's why he never smiled. Fun fact, bananas are curved because they grow towards the sun. Thanks to all the people who shared those fun facts with us. Let's move on. Recently, we met up with successful local actor Logan Raposa in this edition of Interviews with Mike. Hi everybody, welcome to Interviews with Mike. Today I'm here with a pretty well-known actor, Logan Raposo. Thanks for having me. No problem. So uh, tell us a little about who you are and what you do. Well, I'm a non-union actor. I'm based out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. I'm signed to WSM Talent up in Newburyport, Mass. I've been in multiple projects, you know, films, commercials, training videos, music videos, voice, so the list goes on. Wow. All types of projects. It's amazing. How long have you been, like, a professional actor for? I started my professional career on August 10th, 2016. So about a year and four months. Wow, so you're pretty new at this. Yes, sir. And you're killing it already. Well, I'm trying. Hey, you got to work hard to make in this business. I bet. Yeah. It's tough. What was it that like drew you into acting? Well, I always wanted to be an actor since I was a little kid, but I never really knew the steps to take to become a professional actor because it's not like, you know, becoming a doctor, becoming a police officer, a lawyer, like those have set courses. Acting, not so much. So I didn't have the courage to start right away, but um, later on in life, I ended up getting really sick for like a year and I, it got really bad in and out of hospital and it really made me think and changed my life around and that's when I really got the courage in my college, my last term, to go take theater classes and I just loved it and that wow. started the whole thing. That's amazing. So like, would you say acting is fairly difficult to get into at the beginning? Hmm. I would say yes. Even for like those like extras or side roles, you know, like stuff well, like extras, that? Well, extras, not so much. Um, extras, you, you really can get into anywhere through a casting side, like Boston Casting, CP, Slate. Um, I think it's really hard to get yourself established right away. You can get started, but establishing yourself is much more difficult because you're up against a lot of talent. There's a lot of talented individuals in this community, and you really have to make yourself stand out. That's the big thing, I feel like. Like, when you were young mm -hmm. and you were, you know, watching TV, you're like, I want to do that because I think I can do that. Was that, like, your kind of idea? That like was. coming into acting? Just pretty like, much. I, I love to just stand in front of the TV, imitate them, you know, throw the punches, the blocks, yell out, yell out the phrases. That's what I love to do. And I yeah. realized, like, I, I really, how can I put this? So when I was in school, I really didn't have, like, I wasn't great at something. I was good at a lot of things, like right. a jack of all trades. But... I never was great at that one thing. Then it kind of hit me. It was like, what did I want to do when I was a kid? And I wanted to be an actor. And I remembered, wow, I, I'm good at this. Because when I went to school, the, the only time in my life I ever got straight A's was through acting courses. Wow. That was it. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually looked you up on IMBD. Mm -hmm. Not to be afraid or anything. No, no worries. <laughs> and you're in so many things already starting new, being new at this. Would you say it like gets too chaotic being like an actor and like doing all these things at the same time or it can be for some yeah it's not for everyone it's a very busy career I mean I I don't get to see my friends too much I really don't I've actually worked every holiday this year except for fourth of July wow 
wow. with acting. So I mean, it's been, I love it. Don't get me wrong, I love to work, I love to be in acting, but that's not for everyone, because a lot of people, they, the moment they say holidays, they don't really want to you know, be working like 12 to 15 hour days like me on set, but I love it. Wow. So to be into that, um, it can get chaotic, but personally for me, I love it. I love being busy. Wow. Um, have you like worked on anything with like some like well-known people? Um, so I've worked on like some bigger projects. Like I worked on um, Brad Status. That was Ben Stiller's movie. I got to meet him, you know, talk with him for a little bit. He's a very nice man. He's very respectful too. He shook every one of our hands. He, every one of the extras hands who like stood to like the end of the day. Um, I worked on Daddy's Home too with wow. um, Mark Wahlberg, Will Farrell, and John Lithgow. I didn't get to talk to Wahlberg or um, Farrell or Gibson either. Oh, Gibson for like one second when I said, <laughs> excuse me, sir, I'm sorry. And he's like, you're fine. I talked to John Lithgow though, um, the older gentleman, um, Will Farrell's dad, and he's a very nice man. He talked to me for like five minutes, oh, wow. gave me advice and everything. He was very nice and very kind. It's really cool. <laughs> I've always wanted to like just like have a sit-in with one of those guys. <laughs> They're really nice, and they actually do talk, talk to you. Wow. So it's interesting. That's cool. So um, what type of actor would you say you are? Versatile. Versatile? Yeah, I don't want to be, I don't like to categorize myself as one um, particular actor. I think a lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. Like some are commercial actors, which is like, great for like the TV commercials. Um, right. Some are action stars, like great for like fight scenes, stunt work. I want to categorize myself as I can do it all. Maybe not be the best at it, but I can be good at each individual field. Because um, in the New England film community, it's tough. There's n it's not like LA where there's work every day. Right. You have to really claw and scratch to grab everything you can. So the better you are in being versatile, the more work you get, I feel like. Would you, so you're not saying you don't have like any strength anywhere? in like one area of acting? I have strength in like dramatic acting, comedic acting. Um, I'm starting to train as a stuntman to add to that. Um, I have voiceover training as well. I'm really gotten better at that. I've become known as the voice actor in the community. Um, so I guess you could say like dramatic, comedic, and voiceover would be my biggest strengths. Um, and there's others I'm starting to work on as well. What's like your favorite role that you've played? It's hmm. a tough one. It would have to, so I can't reveal the title of the movie because of wow. non-disclosure agreements. Um, I will say it was submitted to an HBO contest. I got to play a soldier because I'm of mixed race and I ended up getting the role over the other actors. It was a very tough role to play because um, the soldier has constant PTSD. Hmm. He's like fighting all types of people, mostly his former friends. And it's a very, it was a tough role to play because I shot three days camping in the White Mountains in New Hampshire. So that to me was just the best role. I can't reveal any more about it, but that's like the basis of it. It's totally fine. <laughs> gotcha. So um, like you said, you were in um, Daddy's Home too. Mm -hmm. Is there any upcoming projects that you are allowed to tell us about? Mm, let's see. Well, I was in a Mary Lou's Coffee commercial. I was a lead actor in that. That's gonna be premiering on Channel 7, Channel 12 once it's all edited and done. Um, what else have I done? I've done a few indie films working with Angel Woods Casting. That's one of the biggest companies in like the indie area in New England. Um, they have an award show and everything, which I hopefully will be nominated for Day Player Awards in that. Those will be coming out in 2018, both respectively. There were one of the films called Eyes. I played one of the victims in it. Oh, cool. I was um, actually played a homosexual rape victim who just got murdered. It's a tough role to play. And it was really cool to play that role. It's definitely different. I've done a few other projects too, but they're probably on the lower side. Wow. Do you have like a dream role? <laughs> like, like it can even be a show that's like not on now, but yeah. you're like, I wanted to be that person when I became an actor. When I started watching act, um, wanted to become an actor when I was young, the first show I watched was Power Rangers. I have nice. always, I always wanted to be a hero to young kids, to be like an inspiration to teach them to do good and to just go after their dreams, believe in themselves, oh, wow. all the positive virtues. And that to me is my dream role. That's why I'm trained to be a stuntman, working on martial arts more so I can go after that role once I move to LA in a couple years. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm just imagining now you as a Power Ranger and I can I, see that. People see it, they literally you, tell me. Blue Ranger, I can see it right now. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So, um, 
since we're getting pretty close to the end, is there like any like tips, acting tips that you would like to give to the audience that you're allowed to share? <laughs> oh, I can share tips. That's easy. Um, I'd have a few. One and the most important one is always believe in yourself. That I feel is the be all end all for anything, any career path, any dream is you have to believe in yourself. There's always going to be negativity. There's always going to be doubters. When I first started, I've had people literally admit to me, it's like, I did not see you going far. I thought you were going to flop and be like, okay, next career path, whatever. But that's the biggest one is always believe in yourself. And since you're on the subject of believing in yourself, don't listen to any negativity. Because there's always going to be negativity. There's always going to be someone who's going to tell you you suck. There's always going to be someone to tell you you're not good. You're not going to make it. And all that stuff. And I think the final one and the most important one is always be humble. Wow. Because it's just the way it is. You've got to be humble in this world. I'm humble now, dude. Two years ago, I was $7,500 in debt trying to be a YouTube star. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm a professional actor and I'm making a living off it. That's amazing. Wow. Love that. She used that for a monologue sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a YouTube star. <laughs> Well, everybody, this has been Interviews with Mike. Again, thank you, Logan, for coming on. That was thank you. A great interview. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Wow. All right. You all have a good day. The holiday season may be over, but that didn't stop us from building gingerbread houses. Mikaela and I held a gingerbread house decorating competition for the first edition of our new segment, You Hungry? Hey, everybody. I'm Michael Evans. And I'm Mikaela Sibinakis. And this is the first edition our new segment called You Hungry? So basically this is a cooking show that we will be doing where each of us will be given an item and we kind of just compete against each other of uh, who makes the item better. It will be judged and a winner will be picked. So McKinley, tell us what we'll be doing today. Today we'll be building gingerbread houses I got from Walmart. Yeah. So we each have 10 minutes to make a gingerbread house and then we will have some judges come in and they will judge us on three categories. One, look, does it look like the gingerbread house on the box or a natural gingerbread house style, I guess you would say. Number two, the taste, does it actually taste good? And number three, Mikaeli? Who knows, pot man. Effort is Effort. the third category <laughs> we will be going off. So I guess, we are ready. Are you ready? Okay. All right. And three, two, one. Start the timer. Okay. So we got here a completed house. So I'm done. <laughs> okay. Um. I guess it comes. Why is everything? McGilley, no. Why is everything open? So uh, I'm gonna win, as everybody can tell. So I, so I guess I'll just, since I got some time to kill, I'll go over what we got in here. Um, this feels like gum, like really old gum. I don't know what that is. We got our um, candy balls, or I'm guessing Christmas tree lights. Peppermint. Fun fact: peppermint gives me headaches. Uh, candy Christmas lights. This feels like icing because it's very cold. Um, house, obviously, gingerbread and I guess icing. Does it come pre-made? That's weird. Icing um, bag and um, sour gumdrops. I don't know, for more lights. Instructions, please don't use those. So um, I guess I'm, well, I'm not gonna use instructions. I don't know about him. <laughs> God, you're, <laughs> you're sick, shit, okay. So I'm just going to um, use the, the model and make the house look better. So, right. okay. So, if I was an architect, how would I design this house? Let's okay. So I get, yeah, okay, so it doesn't come off its board, so these were useless. Let me just I'm trying to make some room for everybody to see. Okay. I might need instructions, but throw them away. So I'm just going to go off looks here. So, do we have scissors? We have scissors. Okay, so 
This looks like Play-Doh. Like, is this like non-edible? What is this? I would assume it's edible. Decorating fun flavored fondo. Well, that helps. Alright, so, do we have like a minute? Okay, do we have like, how'd you get that? Alright, okay, I don't know what he just did there. <laughs> I was gonna bathroom towards that property. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but there's so much candy falling on the floor on the cabinet, so. Okay, so. Which way is the front? I'm guessing that's, okay, so this will be the front, no wait. Hold on, is there like a rule to that? Okay, this is the front. So first we want to do is get the peppermints on top, because you always start with peppermints. First let me figure out how to open this. I might need scissors, because I'm not the... You are. Extend our time. Well, I think we have plenty of time. Time check? Five minutes. We, that's, that's maybe not enough time because oh, yeah. I haven't even done the frosting. <laughs> no, icing. Sorry, frosting is a different substance. So, at the end of ten minutes, we'll see where we are. I mean, five more minutes, and we'll see where we are. It's not really getting any better than we'll extend the time. Okay, I think. Time check? 30 seconds. So we have 30 seconds left. Obviously we're not done, so we're going to extend the time to, let's give ourselves five more minutes. Five more minutes, but then after that, we have to be done. Deal? That's fair. All right. Side, um, 
So this is like um, one of the kids was decorating the house and just got crazy and was low on time and wanted more decorations on the gingerbread house. So that's my review. All right, let's talk about your house. Uh, this is my house. Um, I'm making a mess. At the door right here is a little door handle, and these are the two lovely little sour patch kids who uh, rent the place from their uh, real estate agent. And uh, there's a rainbow fence that goes all the way around the house to keep out you know, the, uh, the dogs. The boogeyman. Oh, the boogeyman. Uh, I was trying to get some sort of candy monster back then. And uh, there's a window on all sides to an eye for the boogie monster. The boogeyman. And uh, the roof is just de decorated uh, in a way that's uh, nice actually a counseling monster now that I'm looking at it. Two eyes of the mouth. I wasn't going for that. Uh, yes. Very symmetry, symmetry with what I was going for. That's about it. Here, let's like put ours next to each other and see how that how they that's sliding. Oh yeah, sliding. There we go. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's like two neighbors. Oh yeah. Oh, I think my oh, kids are with the fence up for it. Yeah, yeah, it's so your kids. Keep your kids out. Oh, um, that's it. So, you know, I've always wanted to try this. Alright, so I think we're all set with the uh, building portion. Now we can move on to the judging portion of the segment. What are those? My thanks. Oh, I like those. So, wait, who wins looks? We're Kylie. Yeah. But the icicles. No, they're the judges. Fine. Alright, well, the idea of tasting who wins. Like, who Whoa. looks more like. Can you taste that? that? Mm -hmm. uh, Boom! You have nerves. Uh, you do not need that side. That's why I did. I, I picked sessions for you, for everybody's favorites. Yeah, like for Patrick's nerves. I like Mike's. No, I give it to Kylie for taste. I don't like nerves. Ooh. I will give it to Mike's though. Deciding about Rob. I don't know, sour guys. I want more of a. Uh, so, so where is that from? Too firm a guy on presentation and taste. And one for icicles. Effort! You get to, I'll give effort to Mike. Here! So, it's kind of the winner. Can we just try not to say it? Yeah. <laughs> alright, alright, get out. Get out. Judges are done. Judges are done. So. Congratulations, McKelly, you're the winner. All right, so this has been our first, hopefully not last, episode of You Love Me! All right, guys, thanks for watching. Well, I guess that wraps up this episode. Until next time, I'm Mike. And I'm McKelly. And, and this, this is Bulldog, Bulldog Weekly. Weekly.